Hi, thank you. Uh, please join Slido. Uh, there you can ask uh, questions that we will answer at the end. I will start my presentation with a story. Um, as I said before, I joined Spotify five years ago, and soon we have a major incident in my team. My team does event delivery. We'll explain more in a little bit. And when we have an incident, we have, after we solve it, we sit together and we have like a, a post-mortem, like a process that what, what went wrong, what could improve. There I met the chief architect at the time, and he said these words. Oh, you spent all this time solving the wrong problem. Oosh, that hurts. So uh, this is a talk about uh, the architecture of our event delivery, how it has evolved through time, but more important, what have been our learnings. And I think these learnings could be applied not just to our, our system, but more widely to every other system. The talk is called The Event Must Flow, because whatever we do, the, the event must flow. We cannot stop our system to try to think and redesign. We, we need to, whatever we do, we need to work on top of what we have now. Yeah, this is me. Um, from Venezuela to Sweden, it's a, a long trip. And this is the agenda. Uh, first, uh, what is an event delivery system? I will be do an introduction. And what, what things we do with those events. I will talk about our system generation. We have three. And of course, the lesson learned. OK. Uh, can you raise your hands if you are familiar with Spotify? OK. <laughs> Everybody. Uh, yes, uh, we are a streaming music uh, company. Um, so what is the event delivery? Every time you use the, your application, uh, you interact, uh, you play a song, for example. We send, we generate and send events that we need to collect them. And then what we use these events? We, first and most, uh, our songs are not ours, are belonging to creators, so we need to pay uh, royalties on, on top of that. So it's very important for us to not lose those events that says this person has played this track for this amount of minutes. We, of course, uh, data, we are data driven, so we took this data to generate market penetration reports and so on and so on. We are part of the billboard charts, so it's not only managers that pay attention to our numbers, now the wide uh, music industry pay attention to our numbers. And of course, we also use this data internally to improve our product. Uh, we have um, features like Discovery Weekly and many more that we took the, your hi listening history and a bunch of other data and we built playlists for you that we think that you will like. So it uses a lot. And the problem is that, yeah, it could sound simple. We are just copying data from one place to another place. But is that we are transferring 250 billion events per day. So that is a lot. So, and we need to do this uh, timely, because we cannot say the viewer just, hey, no, wait a few more days. They have to release their numbers every week. We have to build features every week. And we have to pay royalties at the end of the month. So um, this has to be timely. We don't have to lose any data, and it's the volume of the event that it makes this problem harder. So uh, in a more simple way, we can see the event delivery as a, this box in the middle, that we take the data from the clients and put it in a distributed storage where our clients, our downstream users, um, data engineers, and Data science can retrieve this data and do their magic. So, as I explained before, we have three generations. 
Uh, one, uh, when we were young and small, we were using just F50P. Then we grew and become harder, and then we switched to Kafka 0 0.7, that is what's, what was available at the time. And now, uh, two, three years ago, we moved to the cloud. We are uh, using Google Cloud Technologies, and our system now based on uh, Google Cloud Pubs. So let's start with the first generation. But before going there, I want to put a picture of what Spotify was at the time. Uh, it was only available in these four markets. Uh, users in the number of thousands and not many. A uh, few million events per day. And the primary use case was to create this uh, report for the labels. Uh, that was our first requirement from day one. So let's go with the architecture. We have the clients, and this blue is uh, our microservices in, in our data centers. So when an event is generated, we receive it, and we use syslog to write it to a log file. So we have those events as text in the local machine. So that's, then we have a, a machine, this we call it the collector. It was sharded among the number of uh, blue boxes. And they have a script that after every hour, it do FTP of the logs. These logs, we configure this log to produce a new log file per hour. So we were copying one file in every hour in every host. So we collect those to this the collector and then send it back to um, HDFS. There, then we have a final process that takes these logs and remove the things that are not uh, events, like a stack trace and debug messages. We have a specific format. And then we read those logs, we parse it, we say, we classify those events per event type, and we put in the distributed storage. Right? So after every architecture, I will see, I will highlight good things and bad things. So let's start with the good things. The something that was very good is what, uh, event delivery is not a critical system. So that means that the music will never stop playing because we have a problem with our event delivery system. That saves us a lot, save us a lot because um, yeah, incident happens and the less exposed the user, final user, is, the better. Another thing is the is the couple. We have a uh, event creation in the device. Uh, we have a middle ground that is in charge of collecting those events and processing and making in the distributed storage. And then we have the downstream users that um, do whatever they want with, with that data. And it just was just a simple copy. So we were copying files from one place to another, basically. The downside uh, is that um, Sometimes we have silent failures. Um, this is, getting this data is hard because it's before my time. But uh, what I can get from our documents is that uh, sometimes this, uh, there was a connection problem and an FTP process just hung. So a manual process was required to, to understand what was missing and copy manually the files that uh, need to be copied. And that means that we didn't have a predicted service level objective. This is a term that basically we say, we promise that we will deliver this data um, in this many time, in this many hours, uh, this percentage, like 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, and because there, there was this manual process and not very good, I would say, culture of having our, our data pipelines up and running 
all the time. The SLO was unpredicted, unpredictable. But at the time, it was not a big deal because uh, what we need to do is make sure that the final reports at the end of the month get produced. So sometimes it's one or two delayed in the middle of the month. It was not a big deal. Uh, we were young, we were small. A another problem is that this collector became a single point of failure uh, because we collect data, we put it here, and then we have to copy over. Uh, if we lose that collector, we will lose that data. It became, we still have a copy on the, on the original host, uh, so <coughs> it was, the data was not lost, but it was a problem to identify uh, what is the, the host belonging to this collector and what files are copied, what are missing. And so it was not auto the recovery was not automated. And have you heard the phrase cattle over pets? Uh, here we had the other way around. Uh, that means that a pet is a animal that you care about, you give love, uh, you will be missing if something happened to this pet. And the cattle, you have like many, uh, you don't distinguish one cow from the another one. So um, Here we have pets all over the place. We have our collective were pets, but on, on some level our hosts also are pets. We, those files on the host we need to care about, we, we cannot provision and decommission uh, willy-nilly. We need to make sure that we have like tools that uh, are you sure the data have been transferred, and that kind of stuff. So <laughs> this was our first generation. So, and this is our first learning. This serves well many, many years. And so simple system can get you a long way. You don't need to design, especially if your company is small, you don't need to create a super big system that could solve everything if you still have bigger problems. You are not that big anyway. So simple system can get you a long way, of course, until it breaks, until it no longer serves you. So we build our second generation. Um, Kafka 0.7 at the time uh, is not like it's now. The brokers didn't have replication. So that means that if we send data to those brokers, we need to make sure that uh, that data get passed through. If we kill our one broker, uh, we will lose that data. So we need to design our system around that. At this time, Spotify have gained a lot of markets, uh, 55. We are talking about 24 million uh, monthly active users. Those are generating like 15 billion events per day. And now, besides royalties, we, we like to see how we are performing in those markets that we are just growing. Uh, so now, not just uh, label reporting, but also this all uh, report for our internal managers, like how we are performing. <coughs> so it, what I want to say is that the data in the company is becoming more serious and our system has to become more serious. So we served the same. We didn't change that the, the things at the beginning. We, have, we still have the, our device and in events right into syslog and, and finally to lots files. Uh, we have now in the pops up parlance, we have a publisher that takes this data, send it to Kafka broker. Of course, we have a consumer. This is the user stuff. And those consumers write data on HDFS. But to design around the fact that those brokers are not replicated, what we decide to build is a NAC loop. So every time the consumers write to HDFS, it writes back to a different topic, uh, a message say, I acknowledge that I wrote these events in HDFS. And that means that consumer, the publisher, will consume those acts 
and have like internal buffer that it will decide, OK, these uh, events arise safely. I will now no longer need to resend it. We have timeouts. They say, it, uh, I haven't received the, the act in this time. Uh, I don't know what happened. I will send it again. So we have uh, at least one guaranteed there. At the end, we have uh, the same post-processing, a little bit different because how their files are arriving. And we have, we still split the, the filter the data there, uh, split it, classify it, and, and put it in different buckets or different directories. What went well? Yeah, we removed that pesky dog that we have there in the collector. Now all those machines are cattle. Uh, we can uh, kill and provision new brokers. We can kill and provision new consumers. And everything went well that way. Our system is more scalable. Uh, this is the purpose of this uh, using Casca is that yeah, it's a message-based uh, system and it can handle high throughput. Uh, a design criteria was how to tweak our software to to make to saturate the network link, so we were sending data, receiving data as fast as that machine could, uh, the network card, card could handle. And because we are using Kafka, now we allow a streaming use case. We can have not only this is event deliveries for batch, where we put data in, in this time, in this bucket, and say, OK, we have ready. Now we are allowed to consume these events in real time. And we have like cool applications where we were showing the globe new users and what like globe was rotating and highlighting the country. Um, but th that was just for fun. But of course, we um, like uh, take some boarding a new user. Uh, we are learning which songs he's playing, especially for the first time users. And we are <coughs> using that data to suggest song back to the, this user. The downside <coughs> is it became more complicated. Um, Especially this act loop, it, it was super pain because what it does, it hides bottlenecks. Um, because this is a loop, if a bottleneck happens anywhere on that loop, you will feel the low throughput in the system. But you cannot figure out where is the bottleneck. Is between the producers and the, and the brokers? Or is it between the brokers and the consumers? Do I need more consumers? Do I need less consumers? Is it between the consumers and the ad brokers? What's happening here? Uh, because it's a loop, every bottleneck affects the whole cycle. So uh, pinpoint what's, what's wrong was uh, super problematic. And because this ad loop was built by us on top of, we were building like a TCP stack. So those are pretty complicated tech. And we were building that ourselves. And we have a bunch of parameters. We have like 100 tuning knobs, like uh, how is the retrying time? How is the biggest buffer? How is the maximum sending rate? All of that became too complicated to operate. And especially because I'm not showing the, the whole system, it was more like this. We have the brokers needs a zookeeper cluster to control those brokers. We have like a, some other checks, like a, do we know that we have all the data that we should have? Let's build like a, a secondary system to know that ah, this host was alive, so I should expect loads for that host. So uh, the system was complicated. And this is, and here, so we have incidents all the time. Uh, when we have this, uh, mostly small incidents, but we have a big incident, and this is when I joined the company. When I joined the company, we were deploying this system, and uh, we have a problem 
because from the user perspective, nothing has changed. He still, we still have unpredicted um, SLOs, uh, service level objective. We, we cannot say this data will be available at this time. And, but part of that was because of the system, but, but part of that was because of their organization. We were two teams doing this. One team was called data collection to move the data from the blue boxes to HDFS. We thought like we are moving the logs files. We are moving the logs file from the blue boxes to the HDFS. And um, the job of this second team was to take this log and do all the filtering and the processing and the splitting. So this uh, organization divide uh, make that, yes, our team improve the, replace the collector for the Kafka, but we leave this interface the same. So we never thought about what we'll do after the logs are being delivered. And this is what our architecture uh, was saying, that we solved the whole, the wrong problem. We were focusing on how to move the logs. We weren't thinking about what, how to move the events. We were moving bits instead of moving events. So um, this is my, our second learning. You can focus on the wrong thing if you don't have the perspective of the whole problem. Our perspective is how to move events and make it available in buckets. By having two teams, we have one team focused on how to move logs, and the other team focusing on how to process those logs. By having the whole problem, we can say, hmm, do we need logs in the first step? A place. Maybe we don't need it. So uh, there were some improvements on top of the second generation. Uh, we became one team. Uh, and on top of that, we start uh, creating SLOs. So we said, no, we want to have this goal. We need to produce this data this time. So we start looking the system holistically and see what we can improve. And we start end-to-end -end monitoring, not just the log delivery uh, monitoring, end-to-end. -end. Uh, we rewrote slow components. Uh, we took this uh, post-processing part and we rewrote it um, to make it more efficient. And the interface between the this system that had and we have some simplification in those grades boxes to make uh, everything smoother. Uh, so by having the, the whole problem ourselves, we start identifying like a long hanging fruit that we were improving. Uh, but we were improving, but we, we still, the system was still complicated to operate and we hated a lot, uh, especially the, the original team was not in the team anymore, so we have like the our inheritance was this super complicated system that we need to operate. So we, we say, let's build a next generation. Kafka 0.8 was already out, so we say we can use these uh, replicated uh, brokers to remove this act loop. Yeah, let's think about that. And we saw, uh -huh, let's this post processing we're doing at, at the end. We can do part of that at the beginning. We can filter out event, um, events that are not events. We will filter out stack trace and the bug messages up front instead of doing at the end. So we will transfer less data. Yes, let's do that. Um, also, let's use um, event as isolation. That means that instead of copying all the data from one service all together and then read it and split it and they duplicate it. Let's transfer, let's use pop up topics where we have one topic per event type. So when we are processing, we process all the events from the one category instead of taking all together and split it up. We will work with less data because we will work with chunk of data instead of 
a big one and trying to split it. So we have, the idea was to make this post-processing uh, it became a burden, and it was taking, I don't know, three hours or something for the, our biggest logs. And we were growing, and we knew that we needed to do this kind of stuff to make uh, smaller data and, and be, be able to process that data in, in ch smaller chunks. So we are all set. We have a very good idea what we want to do. Uh, we have, yeah, we can improve this system, we can rewrite that. It was very exciting. And we have this old system that is still behaving, uh, have incident from time to time, but who wants to work on the old system when you can work with the new system? Exciting. What, we, what could we run? What could happen? We call this the summer of incidents. <laughs> um, we have a problem with our Hadoop clusters. Uh, the name nodes were overloaded and had some troubles there. Uh, I, not, I was not in the team having the Hadoop. But what happened is that we couldn't write data into HDFS. So we have a portion of data piling up on the blue boxes. And when we need to move data, we, we couldn't move it fast enough. And yes, this held all over again. And this happened one, two, three times during that summer. And we have to reprocess data, and we pull in people from the rest of the company because we are not, uh, we couldn't handle the, our, the incident ourselves. So we pull date, uh, people, and we show our dashboards, and our dashboards were horrible because um, was done by one team member that want to write bash script to generate JavaScript to put put the dashboard on on the computer. So it was a mess, and we were doing too much, um, and we also were focusing on the new system instead of the old system. So this is our learning number three. Uh, because the event must flow, you cannot uh, you cannot work on the new system until you know that you have a reliable system that's handled the the work right now. And also, uh, fourth learning is that if you could identify cross-cutting concerns, in our case, the monitoring, you can take this part and spawn a new team to handle that. It's, you can make a case. It's a, no monitoring of, of data pipelines is a, is a general enough um, problem that could, we could use a team to focus on that and could be used for our event delivery, but also could be used for the rest of the company. And that's what we did. Uh, we have these uh, teams spawning, taking part of our job and making our load easier, load easier to, to handle. So now we are in the third generation. Uh, Spotify gained a little bit more markets. Uh, we were handling 100 million users at that time. 120 billion events per day, data is growing, and we start using the data to create Discovery Weekly and all these features of self. So um, what I want to say is that the importance of data is growing in the company. So the bandwidth flow, we cannot change everything at the same time. So we decide to focus on the more painful things. We have our publishers. Now, instead of publishing directly to a uh, a broker, we have a service that is able to parse this line, uh, filter out the ones that are not events, convert it to, because the, in the log file are tests, we convert it to our object at the time, uh, at this moment. And then we publish to our brokers. 
in this case, we at the end we di didn't go with uh, Kafka 0.8. We moved to the Google Cloud, so we use Cloud Pops up. Then, but as you see here, we have different arrows. That means that we were splitting the events in the service. We will say, uh -huh, this is a uh, event uh, type A goes here, event type B goes here. So we are sending events in different topics. Uh, so we have different consumers consuming from those topics. And we write to cloud storage now, and we have a smaller version of our post-processing to remove duplicates at the end. So, what is good? Is uh, also there is more boxes. It's simpler because it's the same concept, just repeated per event type. But we don't have the act loop. Now we can analyze our system. It says, ah, we are not publishing fast enough, or we are not consuming fast enough. We need to scale up our consumers, for example, uh, or or it's easier to analyze. Or we can see is the duplication phase is taking too long. Uh, easier operations uh, by using managed service like PubSub and and Dataproc. Uh, we we are offloading work from our side. Uh, before we were handling oh we have this Kafka broker has there this full we need to create alerts on that, and we have a problem with Zookeeper. Zookeeper got confused, and it was super painful. And instead of pay taking care of that kind of problem, we are taking care ma more about our problems, like yeah, how we parse events, how we define events, how, is our, how we can improve our the duplication logic. This low-level stuff uh, we offloaded to, in, in this case, to Google Cloud. Uh, we are able to achieve higher scale, and why? Because we are doing, uh, uh, we are using this, the service to filter out invalid data, so we are moving less data, and we have event isolation. So, um, for example, if we have a, an event that is misbehaving and generating like three times or five times the amount of load, we are not delaying important events because this low-level event is. Um, crazy, producing data is crazy. By having isolation, we can guarantee that important pipeline get delivered on time. And yes, this we, we have time to contact the, the producer of this event to understand what happened, why the loss is suddenly increased several times. So that's very good. We have event isolation. Let's go to the bad part. Um, have you heard the phrase "dead by 1,000 paper cuts"? This is what our team experienced at the time. Uh, we have more boxes, even though they are isolated per event, but could potentially become bad and alert. So we have uh, we could have these small fires all over the place, and these alerts are coming. Uh, uh, because we want a, a guarantee, the, uh, we have a 24-7 guarantee, so we have to be att pay attention to all these alerts. We still rely on syslog. We didn't change it in this generation. We we want to move all our boxes to the new event delivery. We didn't want to go to every microservice and change the way they generate events. So how we solve these 1,000 paper cuts? We solve it this way. We, we realize that we don't, be to, we don't need to be 24-7 available for all the events. Only few are the really important, the one related to uh, uh, playing music, for example. Uh, all related to like uh, A-B testing, oh, this uh, user clicked this button, and that kind of test could wait until the next morning. So 
we introduce a uh, priority in our events and SLOs, uh, not service level objective, on top of those priorities. So we have priority one, we have a few hours 24-7. Uh, normal, we have more hours and only daytime support. And low priority, we, ha we could have like three days of um, uh, service uh, SLO, so we can, uh, if something happens during the weekend, we can work on that uh, on Monday. So by focusing on what matters, the, our events that have high priority, we achieve a very good, um, uh, we improve our life. We don't, there were some alerts that, yes, this could wait for the say or this could wait to, to the next Monday. I don't need to deal with this now. And the journey continues. Uh, the company keeps growing. We still need to remove Ciclo from there. And this story is not over, just the snapshot of what is today. So let's do a recap. We have uh, keep it simple. You don't need to build everything right now. On the, the whole problem, so you avoid focusing on the wrong issue. You cannot jump to the next shiny thing without making sure that your current system is stable because you won't have time to work on this new shiny because your system will demand attention. Try to offload work either by building new teams that could take care of cross-cutting concerns, or if your company allows, using managed service, um, so you can focus on and the value that you put on top, not in this infrastructure that could be handled by somebody else. And uh, focus on what matters. Uh, not all the data is the same. Not all the attention need to be the same. Thank you.